healing work. And I'm going to actually shoot it brought up to a point to my brain, but uh, I need to shoot a video for y'all. All right. Welcome back for part two of this week's Yawa, where we are going to jump right into answering some questions. If this is your first time to the channel, or this is the first video you are finding of ours, hit the subscribe button, go back through the vast backlog of videos that we have available to you currently and prepare yourself. We're going to answer some questions. Yeah. And if you want to know how to get your question answered, put it in the comments below. That's where we're pulling all of our questions for Yawa from comments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. type Yawa question and your question. And then that way I can find them easily when we're pulling questions for each week's Yawa. So this question is from John Kendall. Hey, John. So, I am not sure if they mean their German short hair or their German shepherd because it says GSH. That would typically be a um, German shepherd. German shepherd is nine months old. Racist. Well, I think auto correct a lot of times changes to that. But and let's go ahead and read and see what the context of the question is. Maybe that'll help. Yep. So, races to retrieve and will make blind retrieves if she doesn't see me throw the dummy. Hmm. The real problem is she will wait until I reach for it and then do a couple of victory laps, then drop it near me. How do I correct it? I don't want to curb her enthusiasm, but this is annoying. Sure, sure it is. And whether you've got a German short hair or a German shepherd, it's our answer on both. will be yeah. the same yeah. um, for the retrieving aspect of things and the prating, which is really, really natural for a dog to want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I think to help better understand parading, we need to talk about what parading is. Yes. Parading is avoidance. Not showing off my prize. It looks like that. It feels like that. And we kind of categorize it that direction. And but it is we more. We say it all the time. Oh, look how proud they are. Of yeah, their they're retreat. parading. Da, da, da. And which it, it is. They want it and they don't want us to have it. That's that's the down and dirty of that behavior. I would say now the next aspect of it is they get just to that just on the edge of reach zone. Now, arm's that, length. Mm -hmm, and that specifically is related to spatial pressure. Now, what we end up doing, and dogs are very attuned to it, you got to think about the closest part of you, whether that's the tip of your nose or your hand here, or you're bent over and you're kind of leaning your head forward, whatever it is, they can sense those aspect of things. And they're going to put that distance from that closest part of your body. Now, if you watch and you watch other people with their dogs, if you get the opportunity to do that, like we do, you're going to see, or even just working with enough dogs, you're going to see that that distance is almost identical with every single dog, which means that it is essentially an inherent ability and a natural reaction or a natural response to the spatial pressure of the handler itself. Now, ways that we can go about fixing that involve very subtle things that you can do with your body that are going to make a huge, huge, huge difference. Now, we had um, some folks come in to spend a little bit of time with their dog here just this last weekend, and we got to talk a lot about this because we were doing some basic healing work, and I'm going to actually shoot, it brought up to a point to my brain, but uh, I need to shoot a video for y'all so that you can see what I'm specifically talking about, but it was in regards to healing and the dogs coming back and movement of your feet and utilizing. And in that process, I recognize a thing that I kind of knew that I was doing, but that was the thing that I had to pass on the very subtle movement that I was making that I had to pass on to them to help them to be more successful handling their dog. So it's like, hand the dog to me. Everything happens essentially perfect. You make it look good. Yeah. It's, and they hand them and they're like, I don't know. They're not doing it quite right. Well, it's a very simple thing that when I taught them, it helped dramatically and it's all spatial pressure related. So stay tuned for the video that we're going to put out here. I'll probably do later this month about spatial pressure and movement in regards to the healing behavior itself. Now on to this question. He's specifically talking about the dog is parading with their retrieves, staying just out of arm's reach. Now, yep. what are some ways that we can specifically help through that? So a couple of easy tips and tricks that we typically utilize when we're developing a natural retrieve out of our puppies is um, we like to utilize tug 
tug of war, mm -hmm. where the puppy then wants to bring that object back to you to continue the game. You're creating a game, yes, essentially. Yep, you're creating a game. So they can't play tug if they don't get close enough to you to give you the object. So, so that's a development area of things. And people always ask, well, isn't tug of war bad? I've heard that tug of war isn't a good thing to teach a puppy. Well, we're utilizing it properly and we're starting and ending the behavior and the game. Yep. Sorry, I was stretching. Oh, I thought you were like leaning over to whisper something in my ear. No, no whispers. Um, so playing a little bit of tug, which we have some videos out there showing how to properly utilize tug, um, as well as it really, um, we did a really good one with... I thought it was... Thunder. Thunder. Uh -huh. I thought it was Thunder. Yep, yep. Um, so. so doing a really good job um, utilizing that game, which then they want to hold on to it so it builds a really nice natural hold during that retrieving process. They're mm -hmm. not just spitting it at your feet or dropping it and ready for the next one. Um, also, when Ethan was talking about what that parading is, it's not necessarily, oh, I'm just showing off. It's, I don't want to give this object up. So Correct. that's another thing that you can utilize in the development of your retrieve is when your puppy does come back to you, don't just yank that bumper out of their mouth and chuck it again. Okay. So before you move on to that aspect of things, okay. no, no, no. The, the game of playing a little bit of tug, that would be technically, let's think about this okay. for a second here. That would technically be, or add, is it positive? Is it reinforcement? Yeah, or is we're it, rewarding them for coming back to us okay. with that bumper. So, so we're, we're utilizing- we're a, adding this game as a, as, a reward, as a reward, essentially. So positive reinforcement. It doesn't necessarily have to be a treat. And in all honesty, we utilize, um, we don't usually utilize a treat or a yeah. food reward during retrieving because how do they eat that treat? By getting that bumper out of their mouth. And again, we want to develop a natural hold where they're not letting go of that bumper and dropping it, which then can- relate to dropping birds later on. Um, so if they're trying to get a treat, they're going to spit that bumper so they can get the treat. So we don't use treats for a positive reward, but we can use that game of tug, which most dogs absolutely love playing tug. Yep. Now, all of these things being said, these are going to be optimal conditions, right? If we can work through the way that we're talking about here, it's going to be in your best interest and ultimately the dogs. But if these things aren't working, trying some other things are important. But that's what I was kind of getting at is a lot of what we hear from people. I use, utilize clicker training to mark that the dog brought it back to me. But what that does is starts to develop not as good a mouth habits because they come back, they spit them. And because a clicker also ends the behavior that yep. we're trying to. Yep, 100%. Trying to develop. So. Oh, yeah. So now moving on. Sorry, that was. Okay. Just explaining what that tug of war actually is being utilized as, mm -hmm. as positive reinforcement for the completion of the recall and completion of the retrieve. Um, so then I was talking about, oh, so praising your puppy when they come back and giving them time to hold onto that bumper and not just yeah. ripping it out of their mouth so that they're rewarded for coming back to you and they understand that, hey, bringing it to mom and dad doesn't mean I'm just going to lose the object. I get I to hold on to thunder. it for some more time. Yeah. So praising them. Letting them hold that bumper. Now, if you start seeing any naughty habits arising, like munching and rolling or then spitting the bumper, you need to shorten up the amount of time that you're doing that and take it sooner so you can anticipate before those naughty habits start to arise so you can continue conditioning a nice, solid, non-mouthing, not rolling it natural hold. Mm -hmm. So that was one other thing that I think you can go to just Thunder's playlist, babe. I was trying to figure out how to search it specifically. like Tug of war. Now this means war, ba ba ba. Okay, Very so, first video. Yes. So if you search, if you're interested in seeing how we utilize tug as a way to develop a more natural mouth and a better natural retriever to hand, um, search standing stone tug of war. The first video that should pop up is how to play tug of war the right way with your new puppy. And we show how to develop the tug game and then incorporate standing and praise and a little micro tugs because that's going to prevent it from becoming a big issue. Not every time we have to play this big shake. Nope, just a little bit to kind of re-establish that good grip. And then when we're done, we can take it away. So watch that video. It shows specifically what Kat's talking about with tug. So those are a couple little tips and tricks, um, as well as getting into an inviting position so that you're not creating this um, intimidating big person that the dog has to bring this bumper to. So if you get down and you're just on your haunches and you're just kind of standing there and you're not lunging and you're not reaching for your puppy, where that's making them want to 
um, that spatial pressure then is pushing them further away. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're lunging away then from you. So you just sit there and are patient and eventually they're going to be like, well, this is kind of boring now. And they're going to come all the way into you. The other side of it can be moving away from them, draws them in. Yeah, that was my next one. So the, the, again, with the spatial pressure aspect, I think that distance is the same. So if you start to move away from them, a, they're going to move with your movement most of the time, as well as it's bringing them closer to you, not distance wise, but it's bringing their momentum to you. And then if you kind of do again, it's like a little dance. You're moving backwards away from them and then move forward to them and meet them. It's not a lunge though. Keep no. in mind, it's not a snatch and grab. Subtle movements here. Yep, it's a- they'll figure that out real fast. And they're like, ah, this ain't working again, you know? Yeah. So those are all really good developmental tips and tricks that you can work on with your puppy for the parading aspect of things. Now, ultimately your puppy is, I believe nine months old is what you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so thunder right now, he's six months old and we've been doing this for about the last month with him, um, through collar conditioning. We've built a very solid collar condition to recall. Well, what is a retrieve? A retrieve is a dog that goes out and wants to pick something up and then they need to bring it back. That's the second half of the retrieve. Correct. So that second half of the retrieve is just the recall with the object still in their mouth. So you need to build some momentum, make sure that they're super comfortable with the collar, that the collar isn't only used every great once in a while. And then it startles them because they haven't had it used forever. Um, So you build some momentum in those sessions, do some retrieves. And then once that bumper's in their mouth, vibrate all the way back to you. They try and avoid, which if you watch in one of our more recent videos with Thunder doing the bumper launcher... Mm -hmm. He was doing a little avoidance, a little parading, if you will, with the bumper launcher bumper. Correct, he was. And I was utilizing that e-collar to get a better, more direct return to me. There were, you know, there was one person running the camera. Ethan was helping with the bumper launch or holding thunder. I was running the bumper launcher. So there were multiple people out there too as, you know, distractions. Who should I go to, you know? Um, And so I was able to, by the end of that session, get a very direct retrieve straight back to me like we wanted to see out of him. And that was just utilizing the e-collar consistently and holding the button until he got all the way to me, things like that. Absolutely. I think those are majority of the things, the the biggest, you know, words of caution I can say with that is, uh, you know, make sure and have a strong understanding with the collar conditioning first. So it's not a surprise, like Kat said, but work on those things separately. You know, you can play little retrieving games in very controlled environments, but when you move to those bigger areas where you're seeing more of this parading, you know, don't be trying to incorporate everything all in one session. If you want to see me try and incorporate a bunch of new things in one session and it come back to bite me in the butt, um, watch uh, the last video that I did with Clutch. I started asking too much and he really said, not ready for this, bro. And uh, we kind of worked through it to kind of save what was going on there. But it made was, a few modifications to the yeah, training session. Yeah, which is a, it's a thing. It's I mean, you got to constantly evolve and, and evaluate. And we want our dogs to move as fast as they possibly can without pushing too much. So, so really great question. And I hope we were able to help you. Uh, by answering that. If not, definitely you can check us out on Patreon. It's our online dog training community where we can watch videos of your training sessions and give you more specific feedback because without actually seeing what's going on, we are truly making assumptions based on what we've seen out of a lot of other dogs before. Awesome. Awesome.